Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so grateful you all could be here. I have a quick announcement. Carrie, you want me to just make the announcement real quick? Okay. <laughs> um, as, as, our, as our bylaws state, we have to give two weeks notice of a congregational meeting. We're having a congregational meeting next week, next Sunday, at 1145. So immediately following the late service, this service, we're having a voters meeting. There are two items on the agenda. One is the election of officers, and the other one is budget. And so those are the two things. So next week, and so now I've done my job, and, uh, and the voters meeting, there's no meal this year because of COVID. Hopefully the next voters meeting, we'll get back into the old way of doing things again. But for now, the next Sunday, voters meeting. There. I think that's done. Any other announcements I need to make? Anybody? No? No takers? Okay. <laughs> Well, then let's uh, begin with our worship. Pastor Leland, lead us in worship, please. (laughs) 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. He has destroyed death forever. He has conquered the grave. This is the day the Lord has made. Let, Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
Lord, have mercy upon us. In together, this hour, help us to see our sin and desire a fresh start with you. Help us to see the shortcomings of our lives and look to you for the answers to our problems. Give us a new vision of what life can be like. Teach us hope to, to love, to give, to have faith. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our God has heard the cries of his lost people and has had mercy on us. God has seen our need and provided for our salvation, seen our condition and provided the solution, seen our heart and given us a savior. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our sin is no longer the weight that holds us down. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, as your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, ascended into the heavens, so may we also ascend in heart and mind and continually dwell there with him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we listen to the readings. The first reading comes from the first chapter of Acts, verses 1 to 11. In the first book, O Theopolis, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach, until the day when he was taken up after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom you had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit, not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, Behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from the first chapter of Ephesians, verses 15 to 23. For this reason... Because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets, in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he, laid, then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into, into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated as we sing. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, the risen and ascended Christ. That's right, the ascended Christ. We're going to take a look at what that means today. Let's pray. Grace, Holy Father, we thank you and we praise you for allowing us to gather together. Wow. 
We didn't realize how essential that was until we were without for a year. But Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this time of, of helping again to correct us and in, in realizing the value of uh, and the, in the, the, the underlying value of the congregation. Help us to, to rejoice that we are not able only to be with each other, but even more so that you have decided to be with us. Help us, Lord, to be assured of what this means, not only as we worship here together, but as we leave here today. In Jesus' name, amen. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. It's good to remember that the person and the ministry of Jesus is rooted in history. We do not follow a bunch of teachings that were made up by one person. We follow somebody, as we follow him, walk through history. And there are lots of details that the Bible gives us to help us realize the solid historical foundations of our faith. But today I want us to focus on three things about this story. Why three? Because we remember in threes. Three pigs, Goldilocks and three bears, and now Pastor Mucko in three-something. Okay? So what you got here is you have an image. And the first of the three things is the cloud. Okay? Now, in the Bible, you should be familiar with clouds. Clouds emerge whenever God wants to reveal his glory or needs to hide his radiant glory from those around him. You think of Moses, how God led his people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day, but at night he led them by a pillar of fire. You think of Moses, when he was talking with God, and rather than see God face to face, God put a veil in front, and then there was a cloud. And why? Because the glory, the glory of God is too much. You know, we, I think Indiana Jones or the, the Raiders of the Lost Ark movie might have had it correct, where they all just melted at the end at the glory of what was in the ark. I believe that's probably what would happen to us as well. Nobody says so, but it just seems that we can't handle the glory. So clouds. Clouds do all sorts of things. Clouds, uh, to, they, they may tell us about rain, or they may tell us as a fire, or in, as I lived in British Columbia, they may tell us that a volcano went off somewhere. And so you got, you got clouds. And what's interesting about clouds, when I was about 16, I took my first plane flight. I'll never forget it. i never forget it. it was a rainy day in Tampa, and we were leaving. Every day is a rainy day in Tampa, but we were leaving Tampa. And we got up and got to the clouds, and we're going through the thick clouds, and then I get above the clouds, and I was amazed. I didn't realize how clear it really was that day, and it was totally lost to me because of what was coming from the clouds. The clouds were hiding the glory of the good sky that was behind it. Clouds hide the glory of God who's present. God is present in this moment. Maybe you have some clouds in your life. Maybe you feel like that Peanuts character who's always walking around, who's got a cloud over them the whole time, well, rejoice, because the cloud may be revealing a glory down the road that you didn't think was there. Cool thing about getting older, there's not many things cool about getting older, but here's one. Cool thing about getting older is you've got experience. And you know when things, you've gone through similar things, you know how it's going to work out, it's going to work out. When you don't have a lot of experience, the first time you encounter something, it's sometimes, wow, this is awful. The reason I bring this up is because in life, if we've been walking with this relationship with Jesus Christ, we realize that there's a lot of cloudy days, but also in the midst of those clouds, there's the presence of God, helping us get through times and moments that we couldn't get through without his aid. And sometimes we take it for granted, sometimes we're very aware of it, but still clouds. Clouds important to God, clouds important to the story, clouds important to Ascension Day because the glory of God is present. The next thing, lifting up. I like some modern surreal art. I never can make out, but you know, you can spend the next, how long am I preaching, an hour and a half? You can spend the next hour and a half or so trying to figure out what that is. Okay, this is going to do something no matter if I'm in China, if I'm in Europe, United States of America, no matter where you're at, it's going to do the same thing. World's a globe, it still seems everything falls to earth. Gravity has a hold. It's a law that we cannot get away from. 
things fall down. But what's interesting, our Savior has a habit of turning things around. Here, he's lifted up. Don't be lost with that. There was a lot of stuff to keep him down. Your sin, my sin, the punishment we deserve for our sins, that was placed on Jesus, and that put him in the ground. But he lifted up. He lifted up. Rejoice, your God is the one who lifts up. He lifts you up when you're down. But he's also the one that nothing is so far beyond him that he can't be lifted up. I wish I would have realized this more in my life. I wish I really realized that God, really those stories that talk about God reversing things where you know, he takes water and calms storms or maybe he feeds a few people, well, 5,000 plus people with two fish and five loaves of bread or he heals people with diseases that they were born with and blindness. Um, he also d- dispels demons which seem to have their way. Our God has a, has a heavy way of, of constantly reversing things, of lifting up where things should fall of being the God who turns glory into things that to the world's eyes might seem detriments or negatives. God turns into positives. You ever think of the cross as a big positive symbol? You may after today. The third thing, waiting on God. Waiting on God. This is something we Americans stink at. We do. We're busy people. Uh, last night I was at a concert. I was at, uh, I was at a Concordia at a concert and went a long time, but I was one of the people, and there were other people there. When they, they were giving awards out to all these people. I don't know who they are, but I'm grateful they're getting awards. But I'm sure mom and dad are more, more grateful than I am. I pull out my phone, and I start doing things. And I look around, and I think, well, I should be. And I'm looking around, and everybody's got their phone out, and they start doing things. We're not very good at waiting. We're not very good at being impatient. Even when I have to travel to Concordia in the morning, I forget that if I get off again of the toll road and I get around 99, I'm going to be stuck in traffic as it goes down to one lane. Always during rush hour, one lane. What are they doing? So I got to stay on the road, go pay the extra $20.25 or whatever it is. I think my wife pays it, so I don't really care. And just take that and turn off over there. I don't like to wait. Sometimes I'll take, even on my way to Concordia, because that's something I do daily now, until my daughter gets that license, and we are pushing that license, trust me. But I'll, I'll, take, like, I'll take Holdereth, and I'll go to Cherry, and I'll go take Cherry through, and then I'll come to a little Catholic school there, and if I hit it wrong, I've got to slow down. And, and, there's, and it just seems the day that I don't want to slow down, I see the police officer off to the side there. And one thing I've learned about Tomball cops, they're a lot like Jersey Village cops. <laughs> and so you be a little careful with things out there. But waiting, not good with waiting. I'm not alone, though. Paul Tillich, a Lutheran theologian, he wrote this many years ago, 1952. That seems like an ancient history. I think of the theologian who does not wait for God because he possesses him and clothes within his studies and doctrine. So you can have such an idea of God, you can put God in a box, you can keep him there, and that's not waiting on God. Waiting on God is realizing that God is a person and that people do things that don't often make sense to you because to, to make God into, what we often do with God is we turn him into a caricature. We tell him, here's the operating system on how you need to operate God and you need to fulfill this, forgetting that he's a person. And he's got a bunch of things that he's running. He's trying to make everyone's life, and he can do it, only he can do it, somehow mesh into what he's planning. And it's, you can imagine the smorgasbord of thinking that goes on with God when you've got seven and a half billion people and you're working through every one of them to make your plan complete. Wow. Wow. I'm just giving you three points today. Think of what God deals with on every day. But these people don't think this way. And I've been one of these people. I could often be like this. I think of the biblical student who does not wait for God because he possesses him enclosed in a book. Or I think of the churchman who does not wait for God because he possesses him enclosed in an institution. I'm Lutheran. I'm Baptist. I'm Methodist. That's the end of the talk about God. I think of the believer who does not wait for God because he possesses him enclosed within his own experience. People that stay away from church as Christians, they limit their experience of God to what they think. They don't hear what this person dealt with of God. They don't have their, 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 their idea of God ex- exposed for the grandeur that it can be. Where are you? Are you guilty of not waiting on God? 
Think of the people in the Bible who had to wait for God. Okay? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, they sinned, and God said, one day I'm going to crush the head of the serpent. Did Adam and Eve see the result of how that played out? No. Did Abraham see the result of that? No. In fact, Abraham had his own waiting game, didn't he? 25 years he had to wait to have a child. We're not used to waiting for more than a minute. There are certain lights in town, I know how long they are, and I know how to beat them. Another trip to Concordia. I got a road where I take Luetta, and I turn Luetta to Jones, and I get on Jones, and I hit 249. If I can hit that light just fine at Luetta and zip on at the speed limit, I can make that turn at 249, go underneath of it without stopping. God forbid I have to wait half a minute. Or a minute. That's a minute longer my daughter has to deal with me. Think of her needs. <laughs> and so, so I've got all these ways, these tricks of not having to wait. And then I have to preach a sermon on this and I'm exposed for what I am. I've had so many experiences and so many different things that sometimes I'm the last person to wait on God because I think I know how it's going to go. Woe to me. Woe to me when I don't pray, when I come across something I've done maybe five times in a row or five times over, and it's a different person, but I don't take the time to pray before I meet with them. I know what happened in that meeting, and I know the way it did, because I didn't wait on God. Woe to me when I get upset about something, and I get on that silly box called a computer, and I start typing away. Oh, I'm a wordsmith now. And I hit the button, send. Nowadays, Pastor Mucko, when he gets upset, he writes emails, but there's no recipient on it. About a day later, two days later, I open it up, and there it is. I'm so grateful I waited on that. Because that email, it might have been a page, but it would come back at me three pages. And then, because remember, in communication, folks, 55% of your communication is your body language. 38% of your communication is your tone. (laughs) Those are the two things missing in an email. Now you're down to 7%. You're going to rely on that to fix this relationship gone south? You think your email is going to help that person out? Let me tell you, it's not. How do I know that? Oh, I have some experience in this area. I don't get into email wars anymore. I just say thank you for your response. I'm sorry. I'll try to do better next time even though there's a million things I want to say. But those go in the other email, the one without the recipient. Because I've learned it's best to wait. It's best to wait with my anger and not expose it like it can be. It's also best to wait when I don't see things happening the way I want them to. One thing that's cool about being a pastor, I've been here since 2006. Being here since 2006, I have the ability to watch people grow up And I have the ability to watch some spouses who, when I came here, they were not of the faith, and now they are of the faith. And I was able to witness that. Did it happen overnight? No. It happened over some time. And as we get older, we tend to realize that waiting is something that's all right. But our society and our culture is pushing at us, and this is becoming harder to do. So that's your ascension message. I want you to think about these symbols as you go through this day and as you go through this week. Think about the cloud, that God's glory is present. It may not be as dire as you think at first. Think about lifting up the God who does the opposite of what the world says should happen. God can lift things up where things should only fall. And think about waiting. Instead of pushing the envelope of God and pushing him around, the ascension reminds us again that we are people that need to wait. Sometimes it means praying around. Maybe the Quakers got it right. Have any of you ever been to a Quaker meeting? Quaker meetings are interesting. The Quakers all get around, and there's no leader in the meeting. They just sit there. And then someone stands up, and they say something, and they sit down. And they go on for a few more minutes. And then someone else stands up over here. And then that person sits down. And it gets quieter, and they just sit there. Can you imagine a meeting like this? We would be going nuts right now. We'd be going over the agenda. Well, what's going on? Why is this taking so long? What's happening here? What's... And then somebody finally stands up and says, well, are we ready to make a decision? And people go, no, probably not. And then they all sit down again, and they just sit there. 
We got football games. We got baseball games. What is going on here? <laughs> Not saying they're right with all their theology, but maybe there's something they can teach us. Maybe there's something we can teach them. But waiting. I think everyone could be learned a little lesson on that. May God help you. This ascension and every ascension. May God help you every day to realize these truths are true every day. Not just for one day a year. In Jesus Christ, amen. Let's pray. Grace Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for Jesus. We thank you for this ascension. We thank you for your power. Oh, your power. Even on this day, you had to put a cloud up before your disciples because your power was so awesome after your death and your resurrection. Lord, help us as your people to realize the power that is ours in Christ and help us to live in that power. In your name we pray, amen. Let us stand. And let us share our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. Together we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And this is our offering slide. This gives us the opportunity to remind ourselves on how we can be actively supporting and giving to God and to the glory of, the, of, of Jesus in our worship, in our offerings, and now in our prayers. In our prayers today, we have several prayer requests. First one is for Yvette Peridin. This is the daughter of Vernell and Richard Keating. She's having a very serious surgery on, on Thursday, the 20th. It's uh, to remove part of her pancreas and her, and her spleen with robotic surgery at MD Anderson. She'll be in the hospital about four days. And, uh, and so we just want to pray for the healing and the blessings and all the joy that will come from successful procedure and surgery. Um, th the next one is from Bernie Yar Yarbar Why Bargain, and uh, this is for her brother Robert at the death of his wife, June. June passed on, on Wednesday the 10th, and she's, in, she's going to be uh, remembered in a committal service um, on the 21st, which is also this coming week on Friday. And so we just want to pray for the blessings of eternal life and the blessings of faith and peace and, and the multiple blessings of Jesus for Robert and for, and for Bernie. And then London Messer. London Messer is Sonia Mako's niece, and she's been playing multiple games of softball with a potential fractured ankle. And so we want to pray for her and the doctor and how they diagnose what's going on with her foot and ankle. And then we have continuing blessings for Genesis Simak in bed rest, Scott Lockhart, Dave Brown, Carol Hager, all for healing in their various ways. Louis Alessi, who is on hospice, and for Pauline Wolcott, my mother-in-law. So we go to the Lord in prayer now. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Ascended Lord Jesus Christ, we rejoice 
As we bring our prayers to your throne of grace, we pray for the whole Christian church, that through it the will of God be done among us on earth, and that in it we may rejoice in hearing the good news of the gospel. Ascended Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. All things on this earth are under your feet. We pray for the nations of the world and for those who lead them, that justice and security and peace be known around the globe by your mercies, provisions, and grace. Ascended Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. We pray for the church and for this congregation that we use wisely the time and all resources you have given us, accomplishing your will to further your mission by the power of the Holy Spirit. Ascended Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear our prayer. We pray for all those with special needs facing trial and troubles in spirit or body, and all those whose cares and challenges are concerned to us, especially for Bernie and Robert, and for all who will be there at the service for June, for Yvette, and for her surgery that she comes out just fine in all ways with the healing and the grace of Jesus, for Genesis and her bed rest that mother and child are just fine as they continue in pregnancy, for Scott and Dave Brown and Carol and, and Pauline as they all recover from their various procedures and surgeries, and for Lewis, as he is under hospice care, may he also be kept in the peace of Jesus. And for London, as she goes through her doctor appointment, that she also is cared for and healed. Assure them and us of your continuing presence in their lives and in our lives also. For the times in our lives when we will wonder if Jesus is enough, remind us that because of Christ's ascension, his presence remains each day as he continually pours out his gifts of grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Ascended Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. With gratefulness, Ascended Lord, we thank you for the faithful witness of those no longer with us here on earth who rejoice in your eternal care. Inspire us by their faithful witness and help us to serve you and others in love all our days. Ascended Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.